ever catch yourself like really vibing with a quote? You know, like, mm -hmm. yes, that's so true. But then uh, real life happens and poof, that wisdom gone. Lost in the everyday chaos. <laughs> Anyone else? Just me. Oh, that's so relatable. It's that age old thing, right? Knowing something in your head versus actually truly living it. Totally. And it's way too easy to get stuck in that knowing phase, which is why I'm super intrigued by this whole walking in faith beyond Bible study thing we're diving into. You sent over that audio from uh, thickshades.com, and it seems to hit on this exact struggle. It does. The core idea is that Bible study, it's vital. Can't build a house without blueprints, right? The Bible's packed with guidance. But this source, it wants us to go beyond just reading the word. So more like, you've got the cookbook, but are you cooking? Knowing the recipe versus like, actually tasting the food. Perfect analogy. And they use this term orthopraxy, means right practice. Basically, it's saying that living out your beliefs, the actions are just as important as orthodoxy, which is the beliefs themselves. Ooh, I like that. So it's not enough to just have the right ideas bouncing around up here. Got to make them real, you know. And this isn't just a religious thing, is it? This applies to everything. 100%. Think about someone who's all about, say, saving the planet, but they're using plastic water bottles constantly. Something's not adding up right. Exactly. Or yeah. someone who's preaching mindfulness, but then they're laying on the horn in traffic. Yeah. We all have those gaps, right? Between what we say we value and what we actually do. Oh, this source mentions Matthew 7.21, and it's pretty blunt. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will get into heaven. Talking the talk isn't enough. It's a good reality check. Actions over words. And the source ties this to doing the will of God, not in a, like, preachy way, but how we live out our values day to day. Okay, but what does that even look like practically? Doing the will of God, it sounds kind of vague. Well, they give examples. Treating others with kindness, facing tough stuff with integrity, honesty, even when no one's looking. These aren't like exclusive to religion, are they? Just good ways to be generally. True. It's about living with integrity no matter what you believe. But man, it's easy to get caught up in knowing what we should do, not actually doing it. Like having that gym membership dot gathering dust. The struggle is real. That's where James 1.22 comes in. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Thinking that knowing is the same as doing, that's self-deception. Oof, yeah. That self-deception thing hits close to home. How do we break free from that? How do we become doers instead of just hearers? Well, I think it starts with awareness, you know? Noticing when we're just talking a good game versus actually walking the walk. Really catching ourselves in those moments. Exactly. And then taking those, like, even small steps, but consistently to bridge that gap. Small steps. Consistency. I like that. Feels less overwhelming than, like, a whole life makeover, right? Right. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And speaking of journeys, this source talks about trusting in something bigger than ourselves, especially when things get tough. Oh, for sure. Easy to have faith when everything's going great, but when life throws you a curveball, that's when doubt creeps in. Totally. And they use that image from 2 Corinthians, walk by faith, not by sight, trusting even when you can't see the whole path laid out ahead of you. Which is so hard. Our brains want guarantees, you know. We want to know how things will turn out. Oh, 100%. Certainty is like a drug for the brain. <laughs> but the thing is, life full of uncertainty and sometimes that leap of faith trusting there's a bigger picture even when we can't see it that's where the growth is it's like those times you take a big risk quitting a job you hate maybe even if you don't have the next thing lined up something just says trust the process perfect example surrendering to something beyond what we can like logically understand even if it feels scary and this source connects that to cultivating the fruits of the spirit Okay, for anyone who's not up on that term, fruit to the spirit, what's, what's that even mean? It's a metaphor, really. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all those things. The idea is those qualities are evidence of inner transformation, you know, aligning yeah. yourself with a bigger purpose. So they're like the external signs that an internal shift has happened. Like if you're walking in faith, those things will naturally blossom in how you live. That's the gist, yeah. But it's not always that simple, is it? Because people can be really good at appearing a certain way on the outside. Oh, tell me about it. We all know those people who seem to have it all figured out, but maybe behind the scenes? Not so much. Exactly. And that's the difference between genuineness versus performance, right? Are we acting from a place of real inner change or just trying to project what we think others expect? Ugh, such a minefield out there. Everywhere you turn, there's another message about who to be, what to look like, how to act. No kidding. So how do we know if our actions are coming from that authentic place, you know, versus just trying to fit in or whatever? 
million dollar question. I think it goes back to that surrender thing we talked about. This source quotes Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Is that what they mean by surrender? Because letting go of control, not relying on my own brain all the time, that's scary. Yeah, it's funny how terrifying can be like the first word that comes to mind, right? Surrender gets a bad rap, like it's giving up. But this source, they're saying it's more about aligning with something wiser than us, not being passive, but like letting go of needing to control every little thing. So less about waving the white flag, more about choosing your battles, knowing when to push and when to like step back and let things play out. You got it. And honestly, that can be such a relief. When we stop gripping so tightly to how we think things should go, it opens up space for, well, new things, maybe even peace. It's kind of paradoxical, right? Mm -hmm. Surrendering control can actually make you feel more in control, mm -hmm. more peaceful, kind of like that flow state idea. So absorbed in something, you lose track of time. Oh, I love that. And not just some woo-woo thing. Athletes, artists, people at the top of their game, they talk about flow, not overthinking, just trusting, letting it happen. Blending effort with surrender, you know? You've got your goals, but you're not micromanaging every step. And isn't that like life in a nutshell? We can plan all we want, but there's always going to be stuff we can't control. That's where the trust comes in, the surrender part. We're not supposed to do it all alone, yeah. whether it's like a higher power or just that everything's connected. Kind of comforting. Big time. Makes me think of how this source wraps up. They ask, if our lives were the Bible someone else read, what would it teach them about what we believe? Whoa, that's deep. It's not just what we say we believe, but what our actions say. <laughs> Hit the nail on the head. Bridging that knowing doing gap, our inner world matching how we act. And we're all on that journey, figuring it out as we go. Always a work in progress, right? Mm. But even baby steps done consistently, they add up. For sure. So as we wrap this up, what really clicked with you today? And what's one tiny thing you could do this week to put some of this into action, even something small? Love that challenge doesn't have to be some huge life change. Small steps, consistency, that's where the magic's at. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive on walking in faith beyond Bible study. We'll be back next time with a whole new topic.